Okay, plotting our data in Microsoft Excel, we have our area and we have our distance, our distance x, area y. We go up to insert, we go to scatter, and we choose one of these two options. Okay, you'll notice that no graph has actually appeared yet, we need to tell it what data to use. So we go select data, click add, and then we want an x, our x values were going to be our distance, so we select those. Our y data, select those. Okay, an x squared graph, and that's exactly what we're, what we're thinking. Y is 4 to the x squared, we click OK, click OK, and there's our graph. Now you notice you don't have any labels, you don't have a title, and you've got this series thing here which is quite useless. So we come up here to chart layouts, and we can simply click on that one. Now it gives you the opportunity to change your axes and give it a title. Okay. The other way of doing that would be to go up to layout up here at the top, and you can click on axis title, chart title, data labels, etc, etc, etc. Now, if this was your linear graph, you could also go up here to error bars, and you could add error bars. However, because this is our raw data graph, um, we don't add error bars to our raw data graph. So if we click in here, and we can type in area, curly bracket, capital A for area, square bracket for the units, meters, two. Now if I just go shift in the back arrow, shift in the, in the arrow, and then if I go control shift plus, okay, that'll put it up to a superscript, and then control shift plus, and then square bracket. The same here, on the x-axis, I can highlight all of that, and that was our distance, distance, curly bracket D, square bracket, units, distances, meters, okay? Don't actually need that series, and a chart title would be distance. Okay, obviously you're going to give it a better chart title, I'm just showing you how to do it. So that's your initial raw data, you can see that area is proportional to distance squared. So the next thing you need to do is you need to get area, distance squared. Now to square distance you're going to have to turn this absolute uncertainty here into a percentage uncertainty and then you're going to times it by 2 because squaring is the same as multiplying percentage uncertainty by 2. Once you've done that you're going to have a distance squared column and an absolute value, absolute uncertainty for your distance squared. Here we go. Now here's my linear data. So I've got my area column, just the same as I have my area column here. I've got my absolute uncertainty in my area, which is the same down here. Now I've got my distance squared. So all I've done is I've typed in equals this value times itself. Okay? And I can drag that down, and now that's my distance squared. Now in order to get this percentage uncertainty, I've gone percentage uncertainty, I just control C, control V. And if I just add a little percentage sign in there, so that's my percentage uncertainty and my distance, it equals bracket this one divided by that one times by 100. And there we go, I've got a 1.35% uncertainty um, in that initial measurement. Because I'm squaring it down here, I need, a square, I need to double that percentage uncertainty. So this one here equals, equals that one times 2. Okay, so this is my percentage uncertainty. Okay, so that means there's a 2.7% uncertainty in my distance squared column. Now, in order to do error bars, this needs to be an absolute uncertainty, not a percentage. So I need to go equals that one, and because I'm finding a percentage of, I need to turn it into a decimal, so I divide by 100. So now that 2.7 is now as a decimal, and then I'm multiplying by that value. And I can drag that down. And these are all my absolute uncertainties to um, one significant figure. Okay, so now I've got my data. Now I'm plotting area versus distance squared, and the what colour are we going to do? The light blue is my um, absolute uncertainty. So yeah, distance squared on my x, area on my y, and the two blues are my um, going to be useful in error bar. So let's have a go at that. So this is before we go to insert, we go to scatter, choose one of these two, no data, go to select data, go to add, 
x values are going to be my distance squared. We only select the data, not the title. My y, select that data. Okay, and it's pretty much a straight line, which is quite good. Okay, click OK, click OK. Again, I don't have any options. I can't add titles and labels. Go up to the layout one, nice and convenient. Okay, and now here, this is distance shift six squared. Okay, or you can push two shift and left arrow and control shift plus to get that squared up there and control shift plus to get it back down. Distance squared, curly brackets to say D2, shift backward arrow, control shift plus to get superscript, control shift plus to get back down, curly arrow, and the units are going to be meters two. Okay. Because if you transform the variable, you also transform the unit. Now the title up here, the label on this side is area, curly bracket, capital A, square bracket, meters squared. Okay, meter squared over meter squared is a dimensionless unit. You can get rid of the series, okay, and you can add an appropriate chart title, which we'll do soon. Now I want to add error bars, okay, so as I showed you earlier, you go up to this layout menu and under chart tools so you've got to have your chart selected if you don't have your chart selected you don't have it so you've got to click the chart your chart layout here's all these options now one of these options is error bars okay so we click on error bars and there's a whole range of options now you want to click more options at the bottom more options okay something about the vertical direction we go down to custom because our, um, our vertical direction our absolute uncertainties are different let's go to specified value now our positive size of our error bars and our negative size of our error bars are all going to be the same, positive and negative, we click OK, and we click Close. Now you'll notice that our vertical bars are looking pretty good, but we've got these huge, ridiculous um, X bars, and that's because we haven't actually selected them and changed them yet. So if we double click on them, for some reason Microsoft Excel has got some fixed default value. We're going to go down to Custom, and we're going to change our X values. Now remember our X values are going to be um, these absolute uncertainties of distance squared, because that's uh, what's on our X axis. So if we click that, click OK, click OK. Now I've got a nice straight graph that has um, that has error bars on it. Now although it might be quite difficult to see, there are nice little error bars in there. So errors are so little that we can't actually see them.